Okay, before we get started, I'd just like to ask anybody who's watching this video, please share the video anywhere you can online. Even take it and upload it to your channel if you want. There's no copyright or anything on it. Um, because the algorithms aren't very kind to any sort of videos that are seen as, like, God, like even just like sensible preparation videos for people planning for a potential disaster and basically that's what this fella is for this is to see you through a disaster where your water supply goes off and you need to drink contaminated water or should I say you need to filter contaminated water to drink <laughs> yeah you don't want to be drinking contaminated water I want to bring these to the people who need it please help me to do that Okay, let's get into it. Hello and welcome back. This is the video that I promised you a while back where I'm going to explain a little bit more about this very special filter and also demonstrate it in some real world scenarios. When I say real world scenarios, I mean drinking water from sources that would be the last place we would possibly want to drink water from. So instead of this video having lovely music over the top of it, having a slim, athletic guy running up the hills and drinking water out of a perfectly clear stream using a filter, I'm going to give you a middle-aged, doughy, balding man who is preparing for the apocalypse, drinking out of filthy water sources. That, to me, is reality. And that guy is me. Now when I said I'm preparing for the apocalypse, I said that like tongue in cheek, but I do like to prepare for possible, potential, future events that may occur. So I like to just be ready. <laughs> okay, so this is a extended puddle just outside of my house. The cows come here every single day to drink from it. And obviously as they're drinking from here, they're dropping all sorts out the other end. We've got seagulls, geese, ducks, all sorts on here on a daily basis. I mean, seagulls are probably the filthiest creatures in the world, so this water behind me, uh, I'm not going to say will, it is a cesspool of bacteria, viruses, parasites, maybe literally all sorts in here that at the very least would make us ill at the, and at worst possibly kill us if we drank that raw. So I'm going to fill a bucket from there, pump it into a glass and drink it. <laughs> there you go, not the most appetizing of stuff. So it had it on the wrong setting there. <laughs> now the sound you can hear is of it automatically backwashing. So if the pressure builds up too much in here, it automatically has like a cross flow of back cleaning function and it just cleans out everything inside, <laughs> jets it straight back in there. Like this. There you go. And again, that shows there's a lot of muck in there. It's in the filters and it's being backwashed out all the time. Whoops, that's full. And there we are. Now hopefully you can see just how clear that is. No smell to it whatsoever. no taste to it whatsoever either which is amazing considering how much silt and muck and well muck of all sorts is in that puddle that's all right that's before and after is now in here <laughs> for our next demonstration we're going to be in this cattle drinking trough See where the plodge is all over the place. We drink out of here every day, spitting in it, slavering in it.
There you go, wonderfully clean yet again. Still no smell. And no taste, although this one, although there was no noticeable taste in the previous one, this one actually tastes almost sweet. Almost like, not not quite like, you know, raw mountain water coming out of a spring halfway up a mountain, but it's certainly good. And that water that's coming out of there, it's coming out because the outflow from my fish pond actually ends up in here, as well as various other water sources that are piped into here from the ground. So not only has it got fish waste and, you know, fish food and whatever else comes down out the pond, it's got the cow slaver and God knows what else in there. In there, not in here. And talking of my fish pond, for the last demonstration, we may as well finish off by drinking some water out of what's behind me. Empty glass, just so there's no shenanigans. You can't see that there. I'll put it there you go. Yeah, that's just about in shot, very good. I don't want anybody to accuse me of any shenanigans here. Because we're all aware of how fake the internet is. <laughs> Clean. Now it's back to it. Oop, here we go. Again, no smell. Oh, that water is much colder. Actually, tastes like it's just come out of a tap. What's the matter, son? Want some of that? No. Perfect. There you go, fish. You've got some filtered water. <laughs> now, in order to clean it, we'll just move it from the dispense setting to the clean setting. It'll purge in a second. There you go. It's just constantly back flushing. Ideally, you would do that in a bucket of clean water. <laughs> So you were actually back flushing it with clean water, but it doesn't matter really because the only thing that comes out of this side is clean water. Okay, so on the top of the unit we've got the instructions, which are very basic because it is a really easy thing to use. And we've also got a little slide and when it's pulled that way, that enables us to clean this and when it's pushed that way, that enables the water, which is cleaned, to come out of there. We've got a little clamp on the side of it here, which can be removed, but that's just there if you want to fit this thing to a bucket. On the bottom, we've got a removable filter. That's like an initial screen, so that can just be taken off and washed. Inside the handle, we've got three spare seals, and that is for the plunger. And the plunger can be taken out just by doing that. There you go, that's the seal in there. You can see it's got a bit of grease on it, just to keep it nicely lubricated. That just locks back in. And in the top of here, we've actually got some spare grease. This thing is a little grease pot, so you just pry that off and you can re-grease the plunger if and when necessary. Now I'll just put a bit of water in the sink and I'll demonstrate the purging function. 
Okay, so it doesn't need much water to be able to clean this. As you can see, there's probably about a centimetre or half an inch in there. So that slide we push back to clean. And this is our little purge vent thing here. You should notice dirty water be spat out here once it starts to purge. Oh, let's get that out of the way. Now it'll only purge when it builds up enough pressure to clean it. And I can feel it building up pressure so it's going to do it very soon. There we go. Now there isn't much muck in there because I did purge it just before on the pond and the pond water isn't particularly filthy. And just in case anybody's worried about these instructions being too minimal or not being able to understand them, there is actually a sheet which comes with the filter, which explains exactly how to use it. As I mentioned a moment ago, that is what comes with the filter. Full instructions and there's also a little scannable thing there and there to show you how to operate it and how to clean it. Obviously I've demonstrated that, you probably won't need to use it, but it does come with the filter. Now all this information will be in the video description and in the pinned comment and on the page where I've got this on the Filter Pro site, but I'll go through it in the video now. Now you guys in the US are going to have to forgive me, I haven't got the gallons per hour um, in my head, so I'll put it along the bottom of the screen. So the flow rate is up to 2 litres per minute. That's obviously based on how dirty the water is that's being drawn in and pumped out. The ultra filtration filter capacity is 200,000 litres. That's basically how long it's expected to go before anything wears out. So 200,000 litres is a hell of a lot of water. And that's based on it, you know, being pretty contaminated water. If you're pumping something like what we did from the pond, which is pretty clean water, albeit, you know, contaminated with fish waste and all manner of bacteria and parasites, it'll last a hell of a lot longer than that. Operating life is in excess of five years. That's based on it pumping for roughly four hours a day uh, over those five years. If you've got a family or a very small community, you're not going to be pumping for four hours a day. That's a hell of a lot. Bacteria retention. So this is how much bacteria it holds back. That is in excess of 99.9999% and that's classed as log 6. So that's like a, it's like a logarithmic scale. So one log would be 90% of whatever it is you want to be removed being removed. So say you had a million bacteria, after one log of filtration it would leave you with 10% of that, what's that, 10% of a million, it would leave you with a hundred thousand and then the second log would leave you with 10,000, third log would leave you with, you know, oh god, my maths is terrible, you can do the maths. But anyway, if you had a million bacteria in your sample of water that you were pumping out, you'd basically be left with one solitary bacterium at most. That's a lot of bacteria held out of the way that isn't going down here. The virus retention is exactly the same, 99.9999%. So it's basically making the water safe for life. And the screens in here are classed as 100,000 Daltons, which is the equivalent to 0 0.01 microns. That means that only tiny little things can get through. Seeing that 99.9999% makes me think that this is almost like your immune system. If you had a 99.9999% chance of surviving from something, you'd think that was pretty good. You wouldn't need any external stuff. Oh, maybe that's just me. This complies to the EPA US National Primary Drinking Water Regulations under the Safe Water Drinking Act 93-523, which means nothing to me, but it's quite a prestigious award as far as I'm aware. <laughs> 
It weighs approximately 1.2 kilos. The maximum dimensions of this are approximately 360 millimeters tall, 150 millimeters wide, and 80 millimeters deep. Design features are a detachable pre-filter gauze, and that gauze is a 120 microns mesh screen. Obviously you don't want something too fine as a pre-filter because you want to actually let that water through to then get into the secondary filtration, which happens in here. Uh, automatic cross flow cleaning, which you've seen demonstrated. Built in back flushing, again, that's when it back flushes, and built in purging, which is effectively the same thing. It basically means that this thing cleans itself during normal use. As far as the maintenance goes, you've got the little grease reservoir that I pointed out before and you've got the three spare seals in there and the valve that controls that purging function is 3.5 bar not that that's important but it's written on this bit of paper so I thought I'd better read it now this is very different from the filters that you get in like camping shops and outdoor gear distributors because it's not meant for the individual the individual can use it as you've seen but it is designed to handle enough water for a family or a small group Hence its name, the family filter. And if you've got the type of filters with the, like the ceramic inserts in that need replacing now and again and they need back flushing and cleaning and all that nonsense, and you are in a long term situation where you have no drinking water, those things are gonna wear out very fast or they're gonna become dangerous if you don't clean them or if you don't use them regularly enough because mold and all sorts of muck can build up in there. As this one back flushes itself, the only thing you'd need to do if you hadn't used it for a while is just back flush it, pump out the first 10 or 12 cups of water, discard them, and then after that, everything's all cleaned inside and you can just start pumping your clean water. No need to strip it down or do like a deep clean or use bleach or scrub anything or oh, anything like that. Very, very low maintenance. It is designed to be used long term and the words long term are so important because you don't want something that's just going to wear out after a thousand litres or something. You want something that's going to be there when you need it for as long as you need it for. And I'll just give a little bit of background about these now. I've been searching for something like this online for the last 20 years and it was just a chance meeting with somebody that introduced me to these filters. They've been used all over the world uh, i think the latest ones i think there was 5000 of them went to haiti after an earthquake i think it was an earthquake or a hurricane or something like that I'm sorry i'm not exactly mr current affairs but they've been basically sent out through charitable organizations ngos all over the world and given to people and once you give this to a family they it's almost like giving somebody their independence. They're not having to travel for miles with pots on their head to the nearest UN station to be given some water to then walk all the way back to their village. They can just find a water source nearby, pump it out, and get on with the rest of the day. That to me is the definition of independence. You know, just getting on with it, getting over whatever it is that's befallen you as a town or a country and then just getting back to normal you know not being reliant on any uh, international or global sort of conglomerations because when they give you help they always want something back and the guys that developed this and have been distributing it for the last decade or so are so passionate about what they do they're a local charity uh, these things are actually manufactured approximately 15 miles from my house so that's just pure irony because I've been scouring the world for something like this just to have on standby in case anything happens. And then I find out that they're made within spitting distance of my home. <laughs> you couldn't make it up. So really I want to just take this opportunity to give huge props to Griffith, who are the manufacturers of these filters. Up to this point where I got involved, have only been available through aid organizations. So you guys watching this are literally the first people who aren't in any sort of immediate crisis to have them available to you. They've been tried and tested for a decade, so it's not as if you're getting a new product that someone's just come up with, like a Kickstarter sort of thing. These have been used for ages to great effect and they've saved 
tens of thousands of lives. And really, this introduction to this filter and with what's going on with the world now, all of this couldn't have happened at a better time because there's so many people out there want to prepare for what is potentially coming. And it's, it's not just people who are building bunkers and arming themselves to the teeth. It's also people who just simply want to provide clean water for the family if anything goes wrong. I mean, that used to be seen as a virtue and now it's something that's kind of derided, you know, by, by, by people that can't think for themselves. Oh, I forgot to mention that these are absolutely perfect for people who own camper vans and caravans as well. There's no need to travel for miles to find clean water or, you know, put those chemical tablets in or anything like that into your water source. Just pump it through one of them. You've got ample clean drinking water. I don't know how I forgot that because, to be honest, that's probably where most of these will be sold <laughs> to people with camper vans because they're naturally quite independent people. Okay, if you've got any further questions, please check out the video description and the pinned comment and also visit the Filter Pro page where I've got these because there is a lot of information. If you still haven't got enough information, just give me a ring. My number is along the bottom here now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.